people don't understand, like I mentioned, when you arouse yourself with these things, you're opening yourself up to a whole nother world that people don't understand. And as you mentioned, the people, the musicians playing with the Ouija board, people don't know what these people are doing behind the scenes. There's a reason these, these, uh, these women and these people are screaming in the crowd for them. They're utilizing, many people are utilizing the assistance of the jinn to assist them in their performances and everything. People don't realize these things. This is a whole nother reality, especially many of the Muslims are very ignorant towards this fact. They don't understand that this is a whole nother element. It's just not something that's, you know, friendly and things like this. No, you are inviting these things into your home on a deeper level. You know, you're inviting these things to your home and everything. So when you're talking about the jinn and these things like this, I'll give an example from a personal experience. Eddie, I can tell you that when I was a non-Muslim, as I mentioned to you, I used to play various instruments. I can tell you that it literally felt like I was under possession. I would do things that I was not able to do. I would play things that I was not able to play normally, that I wasn't able to play twice. And people, musicians may say, oh, this is the musician effect. Okay. The word genius comes from the word jinn. So... Me and a brother in Egypt, I remember we were having this conversation. He's a brother that knew Jimi Hendrix. He knew a lot of people. He's an old school musician. And he said, me and him were playing around talking about the word genius and stuff like this. He said, you know, he said, when we say, when we think about the word genius, we used to say, we used to think about that person has that gin. He got that gin. Reflect on this. People like Jimi Hendrix, and he's, he was not able to play without being under a substance, being high, without being high. So we know even from a scholarly point of view, what do the scholars mention about people that get high and things like this? You make yourself open to what? The jinn. Every musician that is on the highest level, think about it. Many of them are doing drugs and alcohol to get them to that level. You can't escape it. You, can, you might as well, if you don't want to be involved with drugs and alcohol or listening to someone that is involved in those things, you might as well take all, all of your CDs and everything and just throw it out. Because this is what the people that you're listening to, this is what they're involved in, many of them. Mm -hmm. Getting high, alcohol, and as you mentioned, Islam clearly clarifies and make clear, makes clear the position on those things. So, and when we're talking about soul music, what is people, have people listened to these terms? Soul music. This is something coming from someone's soul. So what state is that person in when they're relaying, that, relaying those lyrics to you? Or when they were singing that song, what state was the soul in? Because you you may start to feel the way that person was feeling. You understand? This is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. This is a spiritual thing you're talking about. That's why they know it. They call it soul music. Yeah. They say they throw terms out. This is magic in the making. Okay, what magic are you talking about? Def Jam is a, um, is a very, very well-known uh, record label, especially it was very well-known for its uh, hip-hop artists back in the day, such as Run, Run DMC, LL Cool J. Uh, these are some of the artists that were on there back in the day. So a lot of people know it for that. The heart itself is searching for the truth, sometimes without the individual realizing it. But what happens is that we become so busy, and I was just having this conversa conversation with another brother um, about how shaitan makes us so busy in our lives. You know, whether it be with music, once again, movies, you're watching, you know, people that are glued to the TV, literally becoming a zombie. We become so busy in our lifestyle that we don't realize the heart is literally screaming out. It's screaming for guidance. Um, so... The difference between my heart then and now is, is no comparison. I'm telling you, like anyone that knew me before and knows me now, they see a big difference, you know, and, it's, and this is not to brag about myself or anything, but this is this, this is the calmness and the peace that I have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today. It's, it's, it's a big difference and I, can, I can't say enough to be grateful, you know. I can't say enough to thank Allah, honestly, man. I mean, I think about it every day how Allah literally took me away from that environment I was around. Literally, if I wanted to right now, you know, I, I'm someone that can go right back to what I was doing again. And, and literally with all this technology today and make millions of dollars without a record label, you know, 
it's it's and just talking about how it's so much easier to do those things but i know in my heart so, so th those things are temporary enjoyments and they're going to do nothing but destroy me it's as simple as that to simplify it's going to absolutely destroy me and that's what i was on a path of destruction without a doubt without a doubt the importance of seeking knowledge is so that you worship your creator upon clarity like you said it gives you that clarity you're able to see the the false from that which is real you understand and that, and that brings us to a point when i was about 17 someone told me i had a cross i had a cross on my neck when i was about 17 and one of my friends told me you have a, you have a catholic cross on your neck and i said i said what do you mean i said what's the difference i didn't have knowledge so that light bulb i had that light bulb effect that people talk about and so I started to read the Bible. I started to ponder on the Bible myself, which we, we mentioned that most people don't do. Why? Because of that, that hyp hypnosis effect that they have, the hypnotic effect that they're under. Because you're, you're jumping, dancing, hopping around. And so when, when a person goes to read the Bible, you fall asleep. Because now you're in search of knowledge. So finding that knowledge, searching for that knowledge myself, First, I see that what? Jesus worships the creator. Moses worshiped the creator. Moses and Aaron falling on their face and worshiping the creator. Jesus, peace be upon him, saying the one that sent me is greater than I. The one that sent me is greater than all. I said, hold on. I want to worship who they're worshiping. So this gives, once again, knowledge equals clarity, as you mentioned. As simple as that. Just like myself, I was somebody that had a cross on my neck. I used to walk around with these things, but it was more like you felt like it's a, some type of a good luck symbol kind of thing. As, as you can see, and myself, as well as many others, they don't know what that stands for. They don't have the knowledge that comes along with it. Okay, what, what is the belief system that comes along with that? We didn't know. Majority, I would say the majority of our Christian brothers and sisters, they, don't, they, they just don't know. They don't have knowledge of what their parents are following. And that was me. I was in those shoes. I didn't have knowledge of, 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 of the Bible. I didn't have knowledge of, of Jesus, peace be upon him himself, or our belief system. Mm -hmm. So once you have these, uh, this is just misguidance. Once again, they're wearing it. I believe there weren't many of them are wearing it for the same reasons I was. So from working with Keisha Cole. Yeah, I've worked with her. Uh, Bruno Mars. Had you get a chance to talk about now uh, that you changed your life? There is usually amongst musicians who just fill their heart with music constantly, uh, drugs, alcohol, and you see a lot of them committing it. When they rise to the top, they see there's no peace there, really. Right. The heart is yearning for something else, and they commit suicide, uh, antidepressants, drugs, oh. alcoholism. And, and, and this is uh, actually, there's a statistic that it's, it's much higher, uh, suicide rate is much higher amongst uh, famous writers and, and uh, artists. This is a known uh, statistic. Uh, tell us now, did you get a chance to relay some of this information to them? Yes, I have spoken with um, a few friends of mine within the music industry, and some of them know Islam is the truth. You know, I haven't personally got the chance to see, I haven't seen Bruno in a long time. Uh, it's been a few years since I've seen him. Keisha, I haven't seen her in years also, because I kind of like drifted off of the scene. But now, since I've been back here in the U.S., there's people that I want to reach out to again and really uh, talk to them because I know that many people are starving for the knowledge. So a lot of them, yes, I've had the opportunity to give them dawah um, and invite them to Islam. And I believe many of them know Islam is the truth. In fact, one of my friends who was, uh, he was the A&R of the Warner Brothers at the time, or Motown, um, you know, he knows Islam is the truth, but that lifestyle becomes a fitness for them, becomes a trial where they, they see okay if i embrace islam what's what's next kind of thing you understand so and there's a lot of singer musicians out there who are muslim but uh it's very difficult for them to get away from that lifestyle also and it's very difficult for them to come out publicly and publicly and say who they are you know so they're dealing with that as well the statement of ibn al-qayyim jawziya rahimahullah he mentioned that the quran and music can it can't be in the same heart at the same time, you can't love music and love the Quran at the same time. They're, they're going to be at war with one another. So 
you know, it's, it's definitely a hindrance. You know, you may not, a person may not feel the same when they're reciting in the Salah. It's a big difference. You know, it, it, may, it may make you hate listening to lectures and things like that. A person that's addicted to music, you know, when a person is dying, they may be singing a song instead of re reciting the Kelima. It's very dangerous, very dangerous. So why take a chance? Why take a chance on something? And it's something where, you know, we kn I know that it's definitely a trial without, without a doubt. It's more addictive than probably drinking alcohol or it's more addictive than, than, uh, than, than trying to get away from smoking cigarettes and things like that. It's, it's more addictive than that. I believe it. So it's a step-by-step -step process. No one's going to probably get rid of it all, all, you know, you know, all at once. But take the steps necessary. Show Allah that, you know, that you are at least taking the steps, you know. You know, uh, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So, and, and, and most importantly, I would say with that is to ask Allah to assist us when we have those yeah. addictions. Ask, just ask Allah, ask your creator to assist you. Ask Allah for guidance. Even if we're a non-Muslim, for example, the best thing we can do is ask the creator of the heavens and earth. You don't, if you, even if you don't believe that the creator exists, say, oh God, guide me to that way which you are pleased with. Guide me to your way. Without a doubt, Allah is going to guide you to Islam. The Creator is going to guide you to Islam. If that person sincerely asks the Creator of the heavens and the earth to guide them, He will guide them. Mm -hmm. So uh, likewise, if a person sincerely asks Allah to guide them away from music, they will, without a doubt, Allah will assist them. Allah mm -hmm. will show them a better way. Um, women are very vulnerable. In the society, as we see that they're they're used for, for, uh, you know, they're they're degraded in the society already, as we see. So this is another way, you know, from my point of view, to degrade women, because once you're able to to um, to 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 have them swaying, and 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 have them think in a certain way, you know, it's they're open for the attack. They're open for the attack, and this opens you up to on a deeper level to gym possession and all kind of things when we when we are becoming uh, so uh, uh, aroused with music it opens people up and that's a whole nother topic in itself how people become under possession without realizing it because they are in a state of just such a state of arousal or anger or, you know whatever it may be this, this state of arousing uh, subhanallah it just opens you up for so many different things mm -hmm. In this society, um, uh, being a virgin is frowned upon. Why? It's because of what the people are listening to, what they're being conditioned with. They are being dumbed down. So, I mean, they're turning into zombies. Um, so when you have these type of songs, they're still calling the youth to the disobedience of Allah. Where the, where the, where the children, the youth are starting to be very disrespectful to the parents. And the parents don't understand why. Have you, have you examined what, what they're allowed to listen to? What do you allow them to listen to? So, and I'll just, just a quick question. And everyone has the question this. If you listen to music, if a person listens to music, ask them how many verses of the Quran have they memorized? Is the Quran difficult for them to memorize? If so, then you know why. Then you know why. I met people in Egypt, Brother Eddie, and there was a brother listening to music. He was addicted to it. I saw he was addicted to it. And I asked him how many verses of the Quran had he memorized, how many surahs he had memorized. And keep in mind that you have many people that have memorized the Quran in Egypt. This brother had memorized four surahs his whole life. Mm -hmm. And he told me, I said, I said, have you been listening to music since you were a child? He said, yes, I've been listening, doing this, listening to it. And I, he said, I'm addicted to it. You know, I said, this is the reason. This is the reason. Mm -hmm. So anyone that has that same problem, look at, just look at the opposite, the Qur'an, and see how, how much time you spend with the Qur'an. And you'll see that shaitan is trying to take you away from Allah, clearly, mm -hmm. clearly.